Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. In Athens, starting on Thursday, many of the leading intellectuals of Europe and some from North America and other parts of the world will be gathering in Athens to discuss some of the burning questions facing the Greek people and revolution, other places, and progressive movements. The conference is called Democracy Rising. And now joining us from Athens is one of the lead organizers. Creston Davis is the founding director of the Global Center for Advanced Studies and co-author with Slavos Zizek of Paul's New Moment, as I said in our other interview. It ain't me. Go ahead. Creston, hey, tell, tell us about wh yeah. what inspired the conference and what's going to be going on there. It's, it's a rather momentous days that you're having the conference. Boy, we couldn't have uh, planned a conference to be at a better time, given the volatility of what's happening here in Greece. But basically, yes, after Syriza came to power here in January, uh, my friend Maria Nikolakaki, a professor, and, and myself uh, started to think, let's put on a conference that deals with specific questions about democracy rising, that is uh, a kind of inspirational moments where you connect up the Occupy movements to things that happen in the Arab Spring to all over, and you start to bring together leading intellectuals, public intellectuals like Tariq Ali, uh, to journalists, novelists, and even politicians from Podemos and Sinn uh, Féin and uh, Syriza. So it's going to be a, an amazing time where we're all going to be together and thinking through what it means now that we've exposed the sinister logic of neoliberal capitalism and how it's undermined the Greek people, how, what it would mean for us to strategize and to start to, to bring together some demands on our, on our end. Now, the opening session, you're going to have some of the series of cabinet ministers there. Uh, who, who are they and, and, and what force within Syriza do they represent? Yeah, so we're going to have the president of the Greek parliament, uh, Zoe. Uh, we're going to have the uh, minister of education, the, minister, uh, the main spokesperson of the Greek uh, series of party, the Greek, the Greek government. And so all those folks are welcoming us because really this conference is about solidarity with the Greek people. And many of the MPs of Syriza will be involved as well as in Podemos. And so we're really focusing on solidarity with the Greek people, but also uh, making connections about what's at stake today for democracy and how we can start to plan and strategize together as a left. Yeah. Now, the, the, in, in our previous interview, we talked about uh, the possibility of the left front of, uh, the, that's now in Syriza actually resigning from Syriza. Uh, yes. A lot of that left front is involved in the conference. That's uh, right. I guess that debate's going to break out in the conference. Absolutely. In fact, uh, 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 it will be a debate. The left platform in series, uh, I suspect, will resign um, in par from parliament. And uh, many of those uh, left uh, people that make up and comprise the left platform will be in uh, giving lectures and speeches at the Democracy Rising conference. So it really, uh, it's exciting to be part of this, uh, really, for me. Uh, and uh, for many who are already involved, we're expecting thousands of folks to show up and to start organizing. So it's really extraordinary. There's, there's film projects going on. I know the Real News Network will be, uh, will be working with us and has sponsored the, the conference as well as uh, other sponsors. Yeah, we hope, we hope to be live streaming. And if we can get the technology working, we'll be live Let's streaming. Let's work it out. That would be great. Now, yes. now there's one, one issue uh, in terms of the left front resigning and, and, and the critique of, of the deal and all the rest. It seems to me the real problem here goes right back to the election campaign. Mm. Uh, if you're going to run an election campaign and say we are going to negotiate one way or the other to stay within the Eurozone, and you don't say to the Greek people, we, are do we will do everything to stay in the Eurozone, but we will prepare a plan B, and if the deal is awful, yeah. then, then we will have to leave, and that's what you're voting for. And if the reason you don't do that is because you don't think you'd win the election if you say that. Right. Well, maybe you shouldn't win the election. And, and then no kidding, well, once, right? you, once you buy into that, and I'm including the left front in that, because they went right. along with that in the final analysis, especially those who ran. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, OK, so uh, it's, it's a debated point. I, I think you're right. Uh, was there a shenanigans going on there? Uh, was there mis, uh, misleadership or uh, it's, uh, um, attempt to trick folks? Um, you know, here's the thing that's amazing about what Syriza has done. It's put on the map in consciousness around the world about how, what austerity is and the logic behind austerity. 
And if, if they've done nothing else to expose the, the colonialized logic of austerity, then, then and, and to start to mobilize a democratic, pol, a democratic zeitgeist or a democratic ethos, then I see it as a, as a potential success, not maybe in parliamentary terms, but a success in terms of being able to energize and mobilize a larger consciousness about what is neoliberalism and what are those demands and how that they, they, they contradicts basic democratic principles. But you're right. I mean, it's a little, it's a little bit of a problem uh, if you think they're running on a platform that says we're, we're going to stay in the EU and, uh, and, and, uh, and not to take seriously uh, the uh, uh, rejecting austerity, further measures of austerity. I mean, it's, a, it's an impossible uh, contradiction in a way. I mean, it was so. kind of a, I mean, we were doing interviews about this before Syriza won, when it, they were leading in the polls, and yes. we were discussing exactly this. There's just no way to achieve the, getting rid of the conditionality of the loans and stay right. in the Eurozone. It, it That's was, right. It was clear that the Germans are never going to allow that. Yes. Uh, maybe if you had real leverage, in other words, you were so organized to leave, right. that maybe they w wouldn't have put the same kind of pressure on you and you would have gotten a better deal. But, but, but I guess kind of what I'm saying is that Zippers actually was consistent. Like he said, we're going to stay, we're going to do the best we can to stay, Right. But we're going to stay and, you know, may, but, may but, not like the deal, but he did what he said he was going to do. But, Paul, doesn't this leave open the option, potentially, of Cyprus organizing a plan B? And that, that would be the only way to keep the left platform uh, in, in Syriza, is you, organ you take these funds that you're getting and you're organizing a plan B. Now, once the Troika or the EU gets wind of this, they will immediately cut off funds because that's one of the measures of the deal that was just struck in the wee morning hours this morning. If, uh, if there's any kind of uh, duplicity on the part or if the EU senses that, the, that Cyprus is trying to rally the troops to get out of the plan B or the Greeks it, then the funds will be immediately cut off. So here you have, uh, ultimately, I think Cyprus is a kind of trying to stay in power. Uh, but doing it in a very kind of centrist uh, position. And that's not what the platform of Syriza was about uh, after all. It's, it's been ne neoliberalized, if you like. Well, I guess this is sort of some, a, a sample of the kind of discussion and debate that's going to take place at the <laughs> Democracy Rising conference over the weekend. So yeah. uh, tune in. I hope we're going to live stream it if, if we get the yes. technology working. If Let's we do don't, it. we'll certainly be mounting some uh, reports. But but I but I think we're going to make it work. So absolutely, so and you, Paul, you, you need to get over here too. So it'll be great <laughs> to have you. <laughs> All right, thanks very much for joining us, Chris. Thank you. Okay, bye now. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.